Okay, so let's continue on. That was very important, what I just shared with you, by the way. Inflammation. So here, something else that's very important. Ingredients with gluten. I need you to look for dextrin. Hydrolyzed plant or vegetable protein. You see how they abbreviated HPP or HVP? Maltodextrin. Monosodium glutamate. Side note, if you have problems with MSG, usually it means two things to me. You may have a molybdenum deficiency. Molybdenum. Do you remember Marco Polo? Don't you just hate when you're in a swimming pool and you're relaxing and you hear these kids going, Marco Polo, like, what is this going on? Marco Polo brought pepper from India back to Europe. One of the best sources of molybdenum is fresh ground pepper. You don't buy pepper that's ground, you freshly grind it on your food to get molybdenum and that can help you have a relief from MSG. I should get an amen just from that. Okay? And B6. B6 deficiencies and molybdenum deficiencies with MSG. So look at seasonings. Um, starch, texturized plant or vegetable proteins, TPP or TVP. So I know that somebody in the back kind of joking said that the food was everywhere. Well, guess what? It's not in broccoli, cabbage, and cauliflower that's fresh in the wonderful produce section that they have down here. That's the point I'm trying to make to you. So like I cook my own food. I don't buy boxed potatoes and warm it up. I don't even eat potatoes. Maybe sweet potatoes. Okay, dextrin. I want you to see this. This is also very important. Wheat-based dextrin, how much gluten does it contain? Individuals with celiac disease have long worried about ingredients that are sometimes rarely in the United States made from wheat starch, including caramel color. I don't know if you know, but caramel color comes from barley. Barley's gluten. So if you drink soda pop, you could have a gluten issue because of the caramel coloring. Well, you know that you get brown bread, so just be aware of caramel can cause you to have chronic allergy challenges, okay? Wheat-based maltodextrin, wheat-based dextrin, and then they just said, okay, here's how smart our government is, and I'm not saying to be unkind, less than 20 parts per million. See, someone who is celiac sensitive or a gluten sensitive, you really want to stay away from it totally. If you notice now, they say, well, this product could have been made with da 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 da. In other words, they're just saying, or don't you just love it when you, you buy a salad dressing and say, well, it could have soy oil or canola oil or safflower oil. And think, I don't really eat any of those oils. Why don't you just do one with olive oil? Kind of silly, isn't it? Okay, celiac, what is it? Important. It's total denuding or elimination of the villi must be present. So it's kind of going from a shag carpet, carpet to a burger. The lack of villi could be for years but not ever return. Celiac disease and gluten sensitivity are generally defined as states of heightened immunologic responsiveness to ingested gluten proteins and genetically predisposed individuals. I am seeing more people come into my office today with a condition called Hashimoto's. It's an autoimmune problem. I believe that this whole gluten and celiac issue is a part of that because their bodies are already predisposed to autoimmune challenges. I am seeing this, and a lot of you think Hashimoto's, what is that? It's an autoimmune thyroid problem. And a lot of people aren't being tested for it. I've had people with heart problems. I had a lady that came into our office today, okay? Now listen, I'm gonna share this with you. This really makes me angry. She was on Armour Thyroid. I did some research on it. Her arm or thyroid put her body into hyperthyroidism. I had two people to death, and one of them had Hashimoto's. I am not telling you to stop arm or thyroid. I'm not saying anything unkind about arm or thyroid. I am just telling you I'm seeing patterns like this. And see, people love gluten. Okay, big sentences right now. All celiac disease is a form of gluten sensitivity, but not all gluten sensitivity is celiac disease. So probably in this room, maybe we have one or two that maybe have full-blown celiac. The rest of you could have gluten sensitivity, brain fog, pain, inflammation, chronic sinus challenges. People with celiac or gluten challenges have heart disease and cancer. One in four children now currently have sensitivity. There's inflammation and an autoimmune problem inside of a person's body. You see, in my practice, we have patients that come in that have pain syndromes. 
you should see what people look at me when I suggest that maybe you should stop eating bread. But see, everybody's been telling them for the last 30 years to eat whole wheat bread. Don't eat schwabels anymore. It's not good for you. I want you to eat the real deal. Well, the real deal is causing a lot of challenges, especially in kids. And when I tell you why kids are having such a problem today, you're going to really flip. So gluten and organ systems. Now, this is an important slide. In your brain, your frontal cortex shuts down. It can impact your emotions, planning, organizing, short-term memory. How do you want to improve your memory? Hello, we should be having a windstorm in here. People raising their hands. I know. Big word, hypofusion, Alzheimer's. They don't even know what causes Alzheimer's today. So I'm going to tell you what I think is causing it. Altered fat metabolism, gluten, trans fat. You want to avoid as much processed food that you can. Just trust me. You want to avoid processed food. You have to watch. If you're going to go out to eat dinner, you really watch where you go right now. You know, because they all get GFS trucks and Cisco trucks delivered to them. So it's not like they're going out on the farm and pulling stuff out. So I'm just trying to help you. You could have inflammation, high blood pressure. You could have mood problems, immune problems, digestive problems. You could have problems all over your body. So Dr. Bob, I'm not, I, why am I going to live? I keep on telling you. Three months. Just give it three months of vegetables, non-starchy vegetables, and organic protein. I don't eat pork, by the way. Okay, gluten is everywhere. It's difficult to digest. Besides celiac, which is usually severe colon problems, non-celiac gluten sensitivity is becoming more common. Pain, inflammation, brain fog, thyroid and adrenal issues are common. So I put fire. It's fire. Your, fire. your body's on fire. The best way to put the fire out is oil. So here's what else we've been seeing. Is that people who, for the last 30 years, have been on a low-fat diet, all of you in this room, so I'm going to throw out a couple different things to you. You should have the essential fatty acid blood spot test done to you. Scientifically, that's the best way to determine what kind of oil that you need. And you can do that on our website. Okay, that's the most important thing. But all of you could probably be taking at least one <coughs> tablespoon of flax oil every day per 100 pounds. In our practice, we use a marine-based anchovy and sardine oil. And here's why I'm saying this for him. There's a friend of mine, his name is Dr. David Fram. And he wrote several books, and one of his books is called The Cancer Battle Plan. And in his book, he was talking about cancer and breast cancer, leading causes low thyroid. But he made a really interesting comment in one of his newsletters. He said, we don't have a gluten problem in our society today. We have an oil deficiency problem. Because when you don't have enough oil, your gut's inflamed. If your gut's inflamed, all those undigested particles can float through your body. See, when I talk about the skinny wrist, if your wrist is swollen, that means your brain is swollen, your heart is swollen, everything in your body is swollen. Does that kind of make sense to you? So if you don't want to go gluten-free right now, one tablespoon of flax oil per 100 pounds. We use an anchovy-based sardine oil in our practice. You can take a teaspoon or two a day. But... I had a lady that came in that had an MS, and she was like eight grams of oil right? deficient every day. Oh, I'm you sorry. need oil. But the best thing to do is do an essential fatty acid test. Okay, so gluten is found in these grains. Durham, semolina, graham. You know, it made me think about graham crackers. Graham, graham crackers, like fig, fig newton, spelt, kamut. This is a combination of rye and wheat, rye, barley, oats. Corn and cornstarch. You say, Dr. Bob, that's like all of it. You gotta understand where I, I want you to understand this. See, if you have inflammation of your body, if you have any bizarre health problem that you've just been going to doctor to doctor and nobody listens to you and your husband's mad at you and you have fibromyalgia and everybody thinks you're a nutcase, but you've got to have the ho-ho every day, you have to have the peanut butter and jelly, and we don't promote peanut butter by the way, almond butter. Okay, almond butter is better than um, peanut butter by any way, shape, or even spelt could be an issue for some of you. So some of you maybe have to get off of your Ezekiel bread. I'm not telling you to do it forever. I'm just asking you to do it for how long? Three, three months. months. Anybody can do anything for three months, right? Gluten is used for bread elasticity, pastry puffiness, chewiness, and it's also a stabilizing agent in shampoos. Do you know that they put gluten in stabilizers in shampoo? No. See, if you're really sensitive to gluten, Right now, it is everywhere. It is in your shampoo. You say, Dr. Bob, what are you saying to me? 
Well, first, when you're taking a shower, your pores are open, so anything you put in and on your body is going to be absorbed into it. The average lady in this room put 126 chemicals on her body today. But the, I was, my wife and I were, were someplace the other day, I'm not even sure it was at, and there was a, a mom and a dad there, and then there was her daughter. And I could tell by looking at the daughter that she went to the spray tan place. Spray tanning is not healthy. Because whatever you put on your body goes in your body. So I want you to be aware of that. So whatever chemicals that you are putting on your body is going in. So some of you who have a gluten sensitivity, you can test that out. So this is what I do. So to be gluten free, okay? In gluten-free, there's sugar, potato uh, starch, maltodextrin, and omega-6 fat. Do you see this right here? I eat that every day. It's Dr. Bob's swap bag. Start with a protein. It's a medium carrot, two radishes, a half an apple, stalk of celery, a wedge of bell pepper, and maybe six or seven small tomatoes. I don't have a nightshade problem. I'll say it again. Half an apple, a medium carrot cut up, two radishes, four or five baby tomatoes, a stalk of celery. Now, I'm going to throw this out to you as a side note. Radishes are, di are bitter herbs. Radishes promote digestion. So if any of you in this room have digestive distress with radishes, it's not the radish. It's your liver gallbladder. I'll say that again. If any of you in this room have dis difficulty with radishes, it's not the radish. It's you. It's your liver and your gallbladder. Just trust me. You want to start eating radishes to get your liver gallbladder functioning optimal. Okay? Gluten free, friend or foe. Here's the issue. Now we're going to start talking about nightshades. They use potato starch in gluten free. Maltodextrin, sucralose, sugar, and white blood cells can be impacted. I'll talk about each one of these. What I have learned, and I had a patient come into my office, and we were doing some testing on her. She said, Dr. Bob, I can go gluten-free, but I have problems with the potato starch. I never really kind of thought about the nightshades with gluten-free, but you have to become label savvy. So nightshades are tomatoes, potatoes, eggplant, green pepper, paprika, and tobacco. I am not saying that they're bad foods. But if you have compromised liver function, how do I know if I had compromised liver function? You had two babies, your liver's compromised. If you have varicose veins and spider veins and hemorrhoids, your liver's been compromised. <clears throat> Tomatoes, potatoes, eggplant, green pepper. Tobacco is a nightshade. So, let's just say that you have a meal and you feel lousy and you think, oh, that meal is so good. How can I feel lousy? Because it could be the nightshade. French fries are a nightshade. The reason I bring up the whole nightshade, you might want to turn the air back up just a little bit, Abraham. The reason that the nightshades are an issue is because a lot of you are eating them because it's gluten free. Does that make sense there? Because this is an important statement and a lot of people, you're never going to hear this too many places. This is important for you just to know. I don't want you to go home and throw everything away. I need you to become aware of what you feel like after you eat. That lady came in to see me today. She said, Dr. Bob, I feel lousy. So I said, what happened? She said, Saturday night I'm over at a friend's house. They already think I'm a little nuts anyways. And I couldn't say no to all the food. But I looked at the food and I thought, if I eat this food, my gosh. Because see, people cook things differently. So we did the scan on her, I can tell you right now, that woman bought a lot of processed food that she took out of the package and she made it look like she made it. And you can tell it impacted food. Hey, people do that, you know. <laughs> so paprika is a nightshade. Not that paprika is bad, it's a nightshade. Okay, so let me talk about this. Have any of you ever heard of the word nightshades before? Yes. Do you know what nightshades really are? Here's what's going on. So landing, it's an alkaline compound. It creates distress when the liver is compromised. It's a bitter, poisonous alkaloid. It's from potatoes, tomatoes, and nightshades. They have narcotic properties. That means that people who start eating nightshade things like eggplant parmesan, it's addictive because of the nicotine that's in it. Oh, yeah, nicotinic acids in the nightshades. Nicotinic acids, nicotines in nightshades. I'm not telling you not to eat it, but that's why people love it. So if you have pasta with sauce, Wheat pasta today, in this year, this moment, not any other moment in history, it's a problem because the source of everything. So I want you to hear how I'm putting all this together for you. This stuff has not always been bad. I have Italian blood in me. So that means 
that a hundred years ago all the pasta was not bad. Does everybody understand it? We've changed since 1994. That's when the big seed companies took over. <coughs> right, Abraham? It's frightening. See, you're having kids that are raised in this. Now you can see why you have such a major issue. How about sweet potatoes? Sweet potatoes are okay. Now, Michaela is still doing screens back there, so any of you, I'll talk loud to you. You can make sure that you get it, okay? Here's why I focus on this, because see, your liver, your gallbladder, and your pancreas all get information from your spine. So you could have chronic left neck and mid-back pain because of what you're eating. So some of you in this room have been suffering for years, been to 14 doctors, they look at you like you're crazy, you tell them your back hurts, but you never correlated that organs, organs can refer pain to vertebra. It's called a visceral somatic subluxation. That's why we're so successful in our practice, because this shows up on an x-ray. So somebody could have chronic left neck and mid-back pain because of white potatoes or french fries. You see, most of you like to eat potatoes on a regular basis. So now you just learned why you like to eat potatoes. Not only a comfort food, but they're loaded with nicotine. Now watch this. So we have the ability in our practice through galvanic skin response. This guy had a high HA1C, he had blood sugar stress. You can see he had major misalignment right here that went to his pancreas. So food can cause spinal pain. Because a lot of people have spinal surgery and they have pain afterwards. Just like you could have right knee replacement and it's from your gallbladder, get your knee replaced and your knee still hurts like crazy because nobody ever looked into the cause of the problem. So this is some heavy duty stuff I just shared with you. Your spine is impacted by organs and organs impact your spine. That's why Michaela's here. So look at me here. So people that are addicted to sugar and like to eat sweets, guess what they always have? A high or left shoulder. Always. And a lady came and said she couldn't believe it. Her hand was this high, but they love S-U-G-A-R. If you love sugar, it usually means that you have a need for chromium. So this is somebody who came in our office. We do thermography to our patients. This person had an HA1C of 11.3. That is not good. I don't have time to talk about what an HA1C is. This is the same person three months later, and her HA1C dropped three points. You see how our scan changed? So we know that food affects the spine as well as the spine can affect how your body functions.